Hi friends and welcome to a special edition of Brick House Bones where we are going over the recipe, the Brick House Bones method of the exercise guidelines on what type of exercises you need to do, how often do you need to do them, and how hard should you be working. So welcome. I'm Dr. Lisa. I'm a physical therapist and an osteoporosis exercise specialist. And I've designed this recipe for success based on the research that we have out there based on my training through BoneFit and on my training with the Institute of Clinical Excellence and their modern management of the older adult. I love them because they're very proactive and progressive in helping older adults like me live strong, active, independent lives. So here is our recipe here, our exercise guidelines, knowing what the dose is that the evidence tells us. And so strength training is at the very top and strength training is probably the most important aspect. Aerobics is not in the brick house bones method. Aerobic exercise is wonderful exercise and walking, cycling for other reasons. But when we're talking bone specific exercise, this is what we want to target. Strength training should occur two to three times a week, not five to seven times a week, but two to three times a week because rest days with deliberate intentional strength training is also important. You should be doing two to five sets of your exercise. If you're new to exercising, then you're in the two set range. If you're an experienced exerciser, you're in the four to five set range. And a set is if you have five exercises and you complete all five exercises once, that's one set. If you did all five exercises again, that's two sets. How many repetitions should you do of the exercise? Well, somewhere between five and 12. Now, in general, I say if you're new to exercising, you should be in the 10 to 12 repetition range with lower weights. If you are an experienced exerciser, you should be in the 5 to 8 repetition range with heavier weights. Okay, But how hard should you be working? Well, the research tells us 70 to 85% of your one rep max. And one rep max is how much weight can you do one time. What's the maximum amount of weight you can do for one time? And with vulnerable populations, someone at risk for fracture, we often don't do this type of testing. But there are apps that can help calculate that for you based on a five or six rep max, like the most weight you could lift five times. So you can use those apps to help calculate what your one rep max is, or even easier. Here's the easier guideline. You can do it based on your effort. So you self-assess how hard you're working and you want that to be hard or, or hard or very hard in your effort. That is the goal. You don't start there if you're brand new to exercise. You can start moderate, somewhat hard, little bit, not too much. But if you're an experienced exerciser, when you're doing these deliberate strength training routines, you want it to be hard, or very hard so that you're somewhat tired after you've done it. You still have reserve. You can still continue what you need to do the rest of the day, but you know you did something. On a scale of zero to 10, now this is how hard you are when you're lifting weights, how hard it is to work. If a 10 is, that's the maximum amount of effort I can put out. I can't work any harder than that. You don't want to be there. You want to be between six and eight. If you're new to exercise, if you're self-assessing how hard you're working, put it approximately a six. If you're an experienced exerciser, you want to rate that workout as an eight out of 10 on how hard you are working. So somewhere between a six and an eight on your effort for each particular exercise that you do. Now we want your exercises to be those that cover large muscle groups and cross the spine and hips. So we're talking the quadriceps, the glutes, the back exercise, the core exercise. So brick house bones in the multiple videos I have always include something that targets these muscle groups and the variety and balancing between working the muscles in the front of our body, the back of our body and on the sides. So that's it. Start low and slow with controlled movements. We're not trying to move too fast. This is not about aerobics. This is about quality strength and safety. So having good position, good technique, taking our time, 
controlling the weight that we're using. And then we increase that weight over time as we get better. If you're not sure, work with a trainer. They would love to help you know how you can progress and improve your strength over time. Excellent. So there's our resistance training com component. Power training is a version of resistance training. Power is strength with speed attached to it. And we tend to lose power as we get older. We can't move as quickly to pick up our feet or to jump over a puddle or to do something. We don't have that quickness kind of climbing up the stairs. And if we don't train it, we lose it. But the ability to move with speed can be very protective against falls. So power also gives us increased force on our bones, increase ground reaction forces when we're moving more quickly. And that force is what tells our bones that it needs to grow stronger. So an example of power would be versus strength would be if you're doing a squat, so you have a weight, you're, we're doing a goblet squat, we're holding the weight on our chest, we sit on our chair, and then we stand back up slow and controlled. That would be a strength movement. But then if I tell you, Let's do that 10 times as fast as you can, up and down really fast. Now it becomes a power movement because you're moving as quickly as possible. When you do power, we do say that you can reduce the weight somewhat. So if you're normally doing 20 pounds for an exercise, you could probably do 15 if you convert it to a power move. There are many types of exercises that we do for power. And in the Brick House Bones weekly videos, I include a variation of either power or impact in every single video. So if you've been watching those or following those along, you can pick out the ones that you know work for you and your body where you're starting. And next up, we have impact training. And impact is really effective at help stimulating bones. And that's why we have vibration plates and the different research about vibration is how much impact bones really like to receive. But impact is not ideal for every person in every situation. Now, if you are trying to be proactive for your bone health, if you don't have osteoporosis yet, and you're trying to be proactive, then impact may be in your wheelhouse that you can do some skipping and heel drops and jumps and power moves, and that may be A-OK -okay for you. I do them on a regular basis. But if you've had joint replacements, severe arthritis, multiple fragility fractures, impact might not be right for you. I always advise if that's the case, if you've had more complications or fractures, work with your PT and check with your physician before you start impact exercises. But impact can be as simple as heel drops. So I rise up on my toes and I just hit through my heels, controlling how much force happens. You can do it one side or both legs at the same time. But what we know is it's best to spread out those impacts throughout the day. So if you're going to do 50 to 100 heel drops in a day, spread that out between 10 and 20 repetitions, but several times a day, 10 to 20 repetitions, four to five times throughout the day. That impact stimulation causes a trigger to tells our bone to grow stronger, but more isn't better to do it all at once. So hundred at once is not as effective as 20 four times throughout the day. So spread out your impact, do a little bit of skipping, do a little bit of stomping during your walk do a little bit of impact throughout the day to add that. And that can happen uh, four to seven days a week. You can incorporate those impact exercises as long as that feels good to your body. That is not imperative. If it does not feel good to your body, if that is not the right recipe to you, don't worry. That's just one part of the big picture. And your strength training and your balance training is going to be a big part. And if I didn't say before, the power training should go along with the strength training at two to three times a week. I always incorporate a power exercise in my strength training program. There's always something that has power or impact in my strength training. But power can be part of your strength training workout. It can be one exercise that you do in there. 
All right, next up we have posture and balance. And posture and balance, you know, all of our, our, of our national bone health programs, the Bone Fit program, uh, all the guidelines tell us that we can work on balance every single day and we can work on posture every single day. And I like some of the challenges out there, the balance challenges and the posture challenges. You can pick one exercise for posture and do that one exercise every single day for a week. Pick a new exercise the next week. Do that one every day for a week. Pick a balance exercise like standing on one foot or a couple of simple movements, walking in a narrow path. Practice some type of balance every single day. It's astounding those little bitty efforts that we do on a daily basis, the impact they can have over a period of time. How much better you can feel about your posture and about your balance just by picking one thing on those to do every single day. Again, I've recorded, I think, 40 Brick House Bones videos at this point, and there is a balance exercise in every single one. There is a posture exercise in every single one. And so I put those out there so you get to see the variety of options that you have. There's even videos that are targeted just for balance or just for posture. But there's so much information there that you can grab for free and pick the ones that you like to do and make that a part of your daily routine. All right, so this completes our exercise guidelines and the dose. If you're a beginner, start low, one to two sets, two days a week, higher repetitions. As you get stronger, increase the weight, lower the repetitions, add another set, do three sets, do four sets. Watch your strength improve. And as it does, send me a message. I would love to know about it. I've received so many since starting this. It's really only been nine months that I've been putting this content out for you. And I'm just really blown away by how many people are telling me their balance is better. They feel stronger. They're more confident. They're taking care of their grandkids. They're still doing the things that they love to do. And they're finding ways to work exercise into their everyday lives. So I'm grateful for all of you. Thank you for watching. If this was valuable, if you got what you needed, please leave me a comment below and let me know. I have a Facebook group for Brick House Bones where I share lots more information. You can join us there. I would love to have you. It's a wonderful, supportive group of really, really positive people where we're lifting each other up. If you want information on the equipment in my videos, that is also linked below to my Amazon store, which helps support this free content that I produce for you, as well as these snazzy Brick House Bones t-shirts. If you want to show me some love, I would love it if you purchase a t-shirt as well. Anyway, thank you all for joining me and we'll see you next week.